Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Guilt. Today we're making Pad Ka Prao, and it's basically one of Thailand's national treasure dishes. Um, it's stir fried holy basil. I'm making Pad Ka Prao Gai, so with chicken but you can have it with beef or pork. I've even seen it done with seafood as well. But before we get into the ingredients, as always, please do me the favor, if you're not supporting the channel yet, hit that subscribe button and check the bell icon so that you get notifications every Tuesday when a new episode is online, seven o'clock CET. But now let's have a look at the board. First of all, we have the caprao part, the holy basil. It's not the kind of basil that you would know, the, like the Thai sweet basil or Italian basil. This, this belongs to a different kind of, li, li, how do you call it? Well, family tree. Um, they are related in some ways, I believe, but uh, they taste very different. We also have chicken. Normally, it's usually done with chicken breast but I prefer it with chicken thigh, as always, thigh meat is better. Um, some salt, we have some palm sugar, we have three chilies and three garlics. Now here again, play as ever you want, more chilies if you want it hotter, more garlic if you want more garlic or less, etc. We have an egg, because it needs to be served with a Thai fried egg. It's, it's a kind of a sunny side up, but done in oil. Beautiful, we're gonna have a look at that. We need some oyster sauce, some light soy sauce, and some fish sauce. And those are all the ingredients. And we'll start with some prep. We need to prep the basil, the chicken, um, as well as the garlic and the chilies. So let's start with that. Let's start with the garlic, and as always, I prefer to grate it on one of these Japanese graters. Originally, it's done in a mortar. So you put in the chili and the garlic and you pound it. And then you choose how fine you want your paste. So I'm just gonna grate the garlic and we're gonna chop the chili quite fine. So that's done, we'll scrape it off here. Keep everything on the plate. And now for our chilies. Now if you want it less spicy, either use less chilies or take out the seeds but I want it with the seeds. There we are. Get that over to our plate as well. And now we can move on to the holy basil. And here again, it's kind of down to personal preference. I like to just pick the leaves. And then I'll just show you what I prefer to do. Kind of bundle them up and then slice them. Not too fine, maybe yeah, three, four millimeters thick. And this is what I prefer. But if you want, you can just take a leaf as well. You can pluck them or you can put in the leaves whole. Whichever way you prefer, anything goes. So finish up your basil as well. As you can see from the quantity, we have four chicken thighs and this is a good handful of holy basil. Now let's prep the chicken. We have our chicken thighs. You just need to check that there's no cartilage left. Uh, and if you find some, either pull it off. Or cut it off. But these are fine. We need to remove the skin. But don't get rid of the skin. Fry that up and use it as a snack. You can even put it on the plate as well. I'm not doing that, but I will fry these up and my daughter loves to eat them when they're nice and crunchy. So get rid of that. Keep the fat, adds a bit of flavor. So let's start with that, remove all the skin. So we'll put our skin away. And now again with this, I mean, I've seen it done many different ways. Some cut strips, some cut small pieces. I'm gonna chop this up. Um, a kind of a chicken mince, because that's how I prefer it. It takes a bit of time, but to me it's, it's well worth the time invested. 
But the easiest way to do that, I'll show you with on here, is just to slice it up basically. You can turn around and slice some again. If you have a big cleaver, that makes it even easier. But this works too. And I think you're kind of seeing where I'm getting to. We'll just continue doing this now until we have a good size oven. So work the board, work the knife, and I'll see you in a bit. And this is the perfect kind of roughness for me. As I said, do it less, do it more, however you prefer. But now let's chop everything up, and then I'll see you at the stove. Our oil is hot, in with our garlic and our chili. Fry that off a bit, just a couple of seconds. And then in with our chicken. Now obviously this is normally done in a wok, so I don't have one. So we're doing it in a big frying pan. And this portion is enough for about four people. Obviously we'll, we'll serve it, this with rice. I'm not showing you how to cook rice. but Now I will only add salt at the end because obviously soy sauce has a bit of salt in it. And so do the other like fish sauce as well. So we'll only taste at the end to see if we need some extra salt. So we add a bit of soy sauce. Probably about two tablespoons, a bit of fish sauce, maybe two teaspoons. We'll add in our palm sugar and about two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Give it a little taste. Mm, that's perfect, doesn't need any extra salt. Let it reduce a bit more, make sure that the palm sugar has dissolved. If you don't have palm sugar, you could always go for kind of brown sugar, but it's not exactly the same. But it does do the trick if you can't find palm sugar. We'll let this reduce a bit more. To me, this is perfect. There's still a bit of liquid left. Now turn off your stove, and then we'll put in our kapal, or holy basil. And now we mix this in, and we don't want it to cook too much. And there we are. Now we put this to the side, keep it warm, and we'll do our egg. Now we need quite a bit of oil for our Thai fried egg. It's almost deep fat fried. We'll break our egg in here. You can help with a spoon. Just careful so that you don't burn yourself. Now obviously if you did this in a wok, it would keep a different shape than what we have now. But in the end, it's not the shape, it's the taste. And now it's up to you how runny you want it. I'm quite happy with this actually. So I'm going to take it now and then we'll serve it all up. So let's see how we serve this up. I was thinking we'll use a little bowl. Pack the rice in, but not too hard. And now to the highlight, our patkrapao. And our fried egg that we dried off. And a little bit of holy basil. And just a little bit of fresh chilies. And there we are, our pad krapao guy. Let's dig in. 
Here we go. Break the egg, turn it upside down, and make sure that you kind of break it up. And I'll get in there. Bit of everything, bit of egg, bit of meat. This is heaven. Mm. It might not be the most beautiful dish, or at least I don't plate it the most beautiful way, but. It's so packed with flavor. Salty umami from the oysters and soy. There's still a freshness there. Mm. Just heavenly. And the funny story is, I've been to Thailand twice, once a couple of months ago and once 17 years ago. In the time between these two trips, the first trip I didn't have this in Thailand. And then we have a quite good Thai restaurant close by where I live. And I always order number 107. But I never really paid attention to what 107 is. But it's my favorite dish from that restaurant. And then I went back to Thailand now a couple of weeks ago, and I had a lot of pad krapao, and it's that dish. So I guess I'm lucky in the end. I, I loved this dish before I knew what it was called, because I just never paid attention. Really heavenly. And as you saw, dead easy. It doesn't take long to make it. You can whip it up probably all in all in half an hour. And that's worth it, I think. Probably my favorite Thai dish that's not a curry. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And as always, support the channel by clicking the subscribe button and checking the bell icon so that you get notifications. And leave a comment, why don't you? I really appreciate comments. I always answer them. But that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.